I can confirm that Ukraine's counteroffensive is a failure, for the past 10 days they have been launching furious attacks, these are the words of Russian Defense Minister Shoigu, who is confidently leading Russia to defeat. Much has been said about the peculiarities of the fighting in the south, but for those to whom the Ukrainian armed forces are still advancing too slowly, and this is a failure, I have put together the impressions of the fighters of the assault units. Step, field, forest belts. Minor heights and depressions, villages, small rivers, minefields. Whoever you are, assault team on armor, evacuation team, aerial or foot reconnaissance, your movement is visible from afar. The enemy has been preparing to meet for a long time. Vehicles and personnel can be fixed from afar and fired upon. Both sides realize that there are limited places for positions and deployments. Almost certainly there is someone to shoot at in one or another forest belt. A limited number of access roads, logistics routes, all shot and fired at repeatedly every day. You're almost certainly being seen. Getting the job done while maintaining complete stealth for the enemy is mostly impossible. There was a lot of talk about fortifications and minefields. Every wooded strip was dug up. On one of the segments of the Mariupol route installed anti-tank fortifications. It's not just about trenches. There's a whole system of trenches, bunkers and actual tunnels in some places. In every forest belt there is a network of trenches and firing positions. On the fields, spread anti-tank ditches and mine barriers. From the usual anti-personnel and anti-tank mines to more sophisticated mines that await the infantry. Once again it must be stressed that it is a system of trenches, united by passages and entrances, through which the movement of personnel, weapons and ammunition takes place. The rest which is not dug up, is mined, to move forward you have to go through hell. Those who are very smart and think that the Afu took a very long time to beat the Russians out of Robotino village, have not seen what kind of defense system they had to overcome in order to push the Russians off the Mariupol highway and approach the village, envelop it and enter. Tremendous work was done. Russians set fire points, approaches to them are mined, themselves walk on certain paths. Ukrainian positions on the liberated territory are surrounded by mines and stretching rods. The sappers are gradually clearing the territory, breaking trails for further advancement. Often the surprises left behind are burst during shelling or a fire started due to shelling. There has been much talk of armored vehicle losses. It is impossible to avoid armor losses if only because of enemy air superiority. But that's what it's designed for, to save the life of the crew. Even the most hopelessly battered equipment is pulled out by Ukrainians and taken to be repaired. Iron, however expensive, can be replaced, but a human life cannot be repaired. Enemy ATGM crews put cameras in landings ahead of their positions. So they fix targets earlier, on which they work out, and if they succeed, the artillery gets them. Or first aviation and then artillery. There is a hunt for evacuation teams, both for transport and points. An evacuation transport came for the guys and had to turn around on a narrow road, very slowly, without going beyond the road to the field, which is mined. Luckily, they did. The liberated positions are all the more shelled by the enemy, he does not spare shells and bombs, with mines also no problems are not seen. The forest belt, where one of the crews was working, was simply shaved off. Only a few trunks are left, and a good trench is simply no longer usable. I can see why the Russians are so hysterical about losing a Sixth Street village. They did a great job not to miss the Ukrainian soldiers, because it is easier to defend in all cannons. But the Ukrainian armed forces are doing a titanic job to get through and they are getting through.